Hey guys, I'm super excited for this project. Uh, this project is going to be about uh, USD workflow. So there is uh, a lot of uh, procedural uh, procedural tools, and uh, the whole project will be around this uh, like room creation, uh, where I will be creating uh, quite a quite a few tools, uh, procedural tools. For example, books, as you can see here, a table, uh, window frames. Uh, picture frames and uh, windows, plans, and stuff like that. Uh, so this project is to explore USD, uh, mo procedural modeling creation, lightning, and rendering. And uh, I will be sharing the whole process here on my channel. And uh, this specific video will cover only book creation, which is a small portion of the project. I will cover pro a simple procedural book creation and adding colors and uh, creating variants uh, using PDG top network and then creating variants inside USD and then uh, like doing a simple layout using layout lob uh, node so first of all uh, let me show you what it looks like <coughs> so if we render it it looks like like this so uh, here I'm using a layout lob uh, with uh, two grids and this layout lob is using uh, this books which I added uh, to the asset gallery to use the asset gallery uh, as far as I remember it's, it, it, it is how it's called and then I'm using a drop lob which is basically a bullet solver under the hood which is body solver with the 10, 10 sub steps I think it, uh, we can increase and we can increase some uh, some parameters if, if we really want to so yeah and so uh, this is what drives the simulation. And the layout lob is used to like, well layout stuff in the scene. And uh, in this case, it's just for demonstration purpose. And as you can see, uh, it moves something like this. And the way I stack them uh, is by using a stack brush, which uh, layout lob provides. You just hold the left mouse button and you can draw. Uh, you can select uh, which books you want to use. I mean, in this in this case, books, but I mean, assets. We can use only one type of book. And if we simulate it again, this also will be affected to the simulation. I mean, uh, new instances of the book. Uh, the simulation itself uh, could be, I guess, better. I mean, in terms of intersections and stuff like that, but I think for the layout it's really, really good, at least for me. <laughs> well, so as you can see, it, here's how it looks like. And then you can extract all of these um, instances and convert it to actual uh, polygons using extract instance lo extract instance lob, and it will it, it takes quite a while, so I won't I won't do it right now, but yeah. And uh, here's my settings uh, for the drop lob. Uh, active primitives in the books itself. Uh, here, this one uh, and, uh, in the layout lob. And the passive primitives. We can do something like this. It's basically a two grids, which is used, uses, uh, which is, uh, used as a collider. And that's pretty much it. And then uh, here I'm doing a simple DOM. DOM light. Material library is used for the camera shader, uh, which is a physical length shader. Uh, it's to, it is used to add the uh, length distortion uh, and, more specifically, uh, chroma chromatic aberration. And then a, a little bit of bokeh and isotropy, uh, which is basically to simulate an uh, anamorphic look. Just, if you don't know what the anamorphic look looks like, just Google it. Uh, it, will, it it will there you will find a lot of a lot of more explanations than I will do than I'll do. And uh, this is for the like actual test. And if here uh, I here is the explore variance lob. And uh, in this case, I'm adding a uh, to each variant a color, which uh, in to in total is uh, eight colors uh, for each variant. So uh, this uh, is one book, one variant book, which has eight colors. Then 
second block with eight colors, then another, 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 another. And the last one has a book has a bookmark. And right now I'm previewing the proxy, which is a low a low resolution, low res mesh. And here's uh, how it how they look like in the render. Uh, the whole process is uh, separated into three steps. Here are I uh, add nodes, so you can go through them and get an, a better idea. Uh, so uh, in the most uh, basic terms, uh, in, uh, here I created a, a sub context, uh, which also contains a top context uh, like PDG uh, to create variations. And uh, and using PDG, I'm saving geometry to the disk. And the next step is to is to load saved geometry from PDG and uh, save it as a single variant. As a single USD variant. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, let me show you. So, for example, if I want to, uh, I, uh, instead of explore variants, I will use a set variant. And for example, here I can specify which book I want to show, I want to use. So, uh, here I'm creating a single USD file which contains all of the variants inside of it. And uh, I'm not sure uh, how I would use it later. Uh, so yeah, so the second step is to load all of the uh, saved geometry from the PDG .NET and load it inside the Solaris and convert uh, this geometry to the single USD variant, uh, which also which also has materials into it. In this case, it's uh, like a simple color material. And uh, the final step I'm doing here is I'm referencing uh, the single USD file. Uh, then I'm uh, showing. Then, then I'm grabbing uh, each variant at a time and saving it. Uh, and the reason I'm doing it is because uh, uh, I I want to have an option uh, to use uh, this. Like uh, I want to have an opportunity to use a uh, a book variant independently from each other. So here I have a, a layered uh, multivariant USD file, and I'm uh, using the first variant, second, third, fourth, and so on variant, and saving it uh, to the different USD file, and then I'm loading uh, this USD file. Uh, in this case, I'm using a book asset gallery, and I, I name it book asset gallery. And then I hit I accept, and let me just show you actually. And it will start uh, rendering uh, thumbnails automatically, uh, which is done by the component output lob, which is this, uh, the last one. So whenever, uh, this is uh, very handy for me at least, uh, is uh, whenever I make changes to the uh, original book model, uh, I can, or maybe I, I have, uh, in the future I will add uh, a, a more variations and uh, a more variations uh, parameters inside the uh, PTG uh, to possibly add like ornaments uh, or, or maybe other or pictures or whatever it might be. Uh, I just need to repeat these three steps or, the, or two steps, like say this um, uh, multivariant USD and then save each variant again and uh, render it. I mean, uh, I do this layout as, uh, to this asset manager and that's pretty much it. Uh, so this is my, this might be confusing right now, but let's just go through it one, one step at a time. Uh, the first step, as you saw, is book creation itself and uh, creating variants. So uh, here I created an HDA. Uh, if you want to download it, I have also I will also include it to the, my Patreon post. And here how it looks like. You can change uh, a few st stuff. It's very basic at the moment, but uh, I will plan to add more variations later. So you can control the bevel. It's uh, like very 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 basic right now. 
it can be more advanced in the future. And uh, I have also added an option to add a bookmark. It's not working perfectly right now, so keep it in mind. Like the placement and stuff like that. It may need some adjustments. But yeah, uh, so here's how the uh, generator is created by itself. Uh, I'm using a box and then I'm splitting it. Uh, I'm splitting uh, like paper, uh, this stuff, and uh, this, and the cover, which will be a cover. And here goes the sheets, which will become a paper sheets. Uh, this is will be will become a book cover. And let, let's start with the book cover. So I'm polybabbling it. Then I'm using the poly extrude uh, with the uh, output back option. And then I'm poly polybabbling it again uh, just to add these round corners. And that's pretty much it for the book cover. Uh, yeah. And what about uh, book uh, paper sheets? So, uh, so I'm scaling it down, basically. And here's uh, the expression I'm using, but I don't remember why. Oh, uh, I move it a little bit inwards uh, to the inside of the book. Uh, and here I use the bounding box expression uh, where I have uh, referenced the book cover now and I have used a, a dx min you also have dx max which will do the opposite and you can also do it will basically move uh, the paper uh, sheets, book paper sheets, to the uh, maximum, maximum, minimum distance uh, of the bounding box of the book cover, if it makes sense. Uh, it will make sense if you just try it, because I'm not sure how to properly explain it right now. So anyway, uh, here I'm creating a divide lob, uh, divide swap, and just to add more geometry, and then I'm going to point jitter like might make, make it look like uh, it's a book paper and then I'm using the poly extrude to add some thickness to it and then I'm using a boolean and the reason I'm using boolean is to like, remove this uh, very hard to remove uh, very hard edges of the paper it's barely noticeable but here what it does and then I'm using a divide just to triangulate the mesh just in case. Uh, and here uh, I'm creating a group for the paper and for the book cover. And here I'm creating a name attribute uh, for the book cover and naming it a book cover. I mean, uh, I'm using a group book cover, but it's not really necessary. It could be like this and like this and still work. Uh, but uh, what it does is uh, show you, so for example, uh, I'm creating a path attribute uh, which will be used in USD like so. So, uh, whatever I name, oops, sorry, uh, so as you can see, book cover. This is what it was. This is how it's created. Uh, because by default it will be a mesh zero or something like that. And uh, the book cover is uh, uh, geometry. Or I'm, I'm sorry, is a, a group which comes from here. And I have. Uh, and the way I have done it is by uh, using the subset groups. Because, and, uh, and star means that I'm, I want to import all of the groups from the saved geometry. And if I delete it, it will be like so. Uh, it is okay uh, like so, but just in case I also 
uh, importing groups, but this is not really necessary at this point. At this point, I mean, uh, when I have a path attribute. <coughs> so it can be also like, and, it, and uh, this name will, be, will appear here. And uh, then I'm merging everything together. And then I'm merging a bookmark. And the way I, I control a bookmark, by the way, here's how it's done. Basic editing, point jitter to add some randomness. And here I'm also using the bounding box uh, of the book sheets to translate uh, in X and Z. For example, as you can see, it's a bookmark it sticks to the paper sheets. It's not like uh, it moving with it. Yeah, this is uh, why bounding box expression is very handy. Uh, so after that, I'm also creating a name attribute, which will be a path attribute inside USD. Uh, <coughs> and then I'm uh, using a visibility SOP and exposing a primitive. And uh, you can hide it or unhide it. And uh, just basically can be used with this toggle. So you just um, so you just uh, copy parameter, copy this parameter. Let me show you actually. So you can copy parameter. So you copy this parameter, toggle parameter, and uh, paste relative reference. And this way you can toggle bookmark on and off. And then I'm adding a normal rest position just in case match size to be on the ground plane. Transforming it and adding a now just in case. And here we are moving to the PDG part. Uh, as you can see here, here I have an add sign with a scale Y. And here I have a unit scale parameter. Uh, both of them are coming from the top net. And besides these two attributes, I have also added a paper noise, which controls the amount of papers typing, or just to add variations. And that's pretty much it for the book itself. And uh, let's move to the PDG part. So if you dive, uh, dive inside the PDG, we are, I have a controller here, which is uh, basically a controller, as you might do when creating procedural geometry, to control stuff uh, from the one place, from the, from the single place. Uh, and here I create in there uh, two formats, file formats, uh, Houdini native format and USD format. And uh, I specify an, an out output path and soft path, uh, path is specifically for this uh, raw geometry output, which I will show in just in a second. And creating a USD file name, USD file path, and USD extension. Uh, and these are all these uh, parameters are uh, uh, using a relative reference inside these two nodes, which I will show you right now. So, first of all, I'm creating a wedge uh, top node. And here I specify how many book variations uh, I want which is 7 in this case. I'm creating an attribute name uh, scale y, which is used in this transform sop here and here, uh, to two attributes, uh, which has a range and uh, from 0.5 to 2. Uh, so it will control the y uh, axis only, and uh, basically the height of the book, and it will, it will uh, Pick uh, uh, on each variation, it will uh, pick a random seat, uh, pick a random value from between 0.5 and 2, instead of going from 0 0.5 to 2, like gradually uh, or linearly, I guess. Uh, so, anyway, 
Uh, same for Uniscale, so also random sample, 0.5 and 2, and Piper Noise is also random sample but with different values. And uh, what about Rob Geometry Stop? Uh, I have also added a, a custom uh, reference uh, uh, reference folder, which uh, I have done by uh, clicking Edit Parameter Interface. I have added a folder, this one, uh, added a string and the path. Uh, it is located. It is this one, I think. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it is referencing uh, file paths uh, from the controller. This and this. And then I'm using, I'm copying this parameter and referencing it uh, inside the output path here and here. And then I'm using the wage index, which is basically if I generate this node. Uh, we have a wage count and wage index and a wage num and we can use this attribute wage index in, when saving to the disk uh, so it will have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on and so forth uh, so uh, we need to manually do uh, add this number <coughs> and that's pretty much it and here I change the cache mode to write files I'm not sure if it's needed, I guess. As far as, as far as I remember, it also works with automation just fine. So that's pretty much it for the rock geometry output. And then uh, same thing goes to the uh, rock USD output. But here I have only one additional field, which is USD extension file, which comes from here. So, yeah. And the way, for me, it's personally beneficial to have a controller because I can, from the single place, uh, I can change here something and it will be uh, in the several nodes at the same time. <coughs> so yeah, and then I'm also, re again, referencing this uh, attributes, uh, these fields, and then I'm uh, use, using them here in the output path. Path, object name. Object name is uh, like file name. Which I need to remember to which I need to rename this uh, parameter to better to from object name to file name something like that and then also wage index and uh, then a, a USD file extension and the only thing that is different here from the USD uh, rom geometry output is that uh, I have changed the generate when uh, method to only generate uh, files when the all upstream items are generated, because uh, otherwise it was getting I was getting an, an error uh, because I'm not sure why exactly. So I was I won't be explaining it <laughs> to not confuse you. And that's pretty much it. And uh, uh, all you have to do is to cook note. So it saves uh, seven files. Zero. It's saving a native Houdini file and then it's saving USD files. And that's pretty much it for the top network. And uh, I have also created a, like, a subnet for this to have it. Uh, so not to set up it all the time. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the creating variants itself and uh, inside PDG. And let's move to the creating a single USD variant from this saved variants. So first of all, we need to load geometry. And you can um, read uh, all the nodes. Loading all the variations, variants, creating variant set, adding materials, adding a USD multivariant path, and saving it. So first of all, we, are, we need to import geometry, and uh, I, I'm doing it with a geometry component geometry uh, lob. <coughs> and here I uh, have a file SOP and polyreduce SOP, uh, which is basically used to create a proxy and the simulation proxy. A simulation proxy is uh, 
is like uh, for the drop lob, which I have shown earlier in the video. And the file sop is uh, using also a channel reference references uh, from the component geometry lob, uh, which you can see here. It's, uh, I have created presets uh, for the native Houdini uh, file extension and the same for USD. Uh, so here I'm specifying an extension where where variant is located, variant name, file name, I need to re rename it also, and the variant number. And the way I've done it uh, is by also editing the parameter interface and adding this optional parameters. This is basically to also edit everything from a single place. And then I'm just referencing the file path, file name, variant number, and the file extension, and which is which loads the file itself. And the same goes for the all of the books. The only thing is changing here is the variant number. <laughs> and then uh, and then I'm linking materials which comes from this material library lob which has all the materials. And this is a book paper shader and this is book color shaders. But uh, we can split uh, split every shader uh, per book into different material libraries, or create a, or s create a subnets or whatever to or organize it by time. While I was exploring, uh, I'm using this type of organization layout, and then I'm linking this material library to the to each second output input to the component material lob. And here, uh, and on the material variant set, I'm using a Geo. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but I have read it uh, on the side effects form, so you can check it out. And then I'm using a variant name, which is basically a file name for the variant, which is this one, in this case. So I'm using a book, book one, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And then I'm uh, Merging it all together to the component geometry variants and naming it as uh, book multi layer variants. And it all and we have all the materials in it. All of the geometry, proxy, render, and sim proxy. And, th and then I'm saving it locally. And uh, here I also added an additional parameter field uh, where I want to save this file and then I'm just saving it to the right next to the heap file in this case. And also, and this, uh, as far as I remember, is by default. And this uh, book variance variant set is comes from this field. And if we explore variants, I should save it. And I have a switch for a presser for this. And here we have all the variants. And that's pretty much it for creating a single multivariant USD file. And uh, I want to point out that uh, this method works for me. It's more understandable for me rather than creating a, a variant block because it's somewhat confusing for me right now. I, I, like, I mean, it's better uh, for a lot of assets, but for me, it's just very con confusing at the moment. I haven't figured out how to properly use it, so. This is why I, I choose this. Uh, and also under the component geometry output, uh, you need to enable variant layers, which is basically create a single USD file with all of the variants. Mm -hmm. And let's move to the 
creating and rendering uh, USD variant and saving it to the asset library. Uh, so here we are referencing a uh, single multivariant USD file, which is which comes from this controller and the path. Uh, it will be better if it will be a relative relative, relative path, a little bit like so. Because absolute path is not really ideal. So yeah, relative path is much better. So here I'm uh, loading a multi layered um, USD file. I'm setting a variant. Uh, I have chosen the variant set. And uh, I have enabled to choose variant by the index. And as you can see, some of them um, has bookmark and some of them don't. And then I'm changing uh, the uh, book name uh, from the old one to the new one. And then I'm basically saving it uh, again, but uh, to the book asset gallery. And here I also added three optional fields. Uh, and uh, I have also reference in this uh, parameter here, which is basically uh, not to do additional step and change it here, so I can change it from here and save it. And here's my uh, saving options. Here I changed uh, to the Houdini gel. And everything else is by default. So, uh, and uh, then I just need to save to disk, increase the variant number, save to disk, and so on and so on, until every or until all the variants uh, have been saved to the disk. So uh, after we saved uh, all of the assets, use the assets uh, which we want to use in the Solaris assets gallery. All we have to do is to open a layout assets gallery. I will delete it. Uh, click on the plus icon, uh, folder plus icon, and we have to specify a directory. In this case, uh, <coughs> in this case, uh, uh, here I specified the book assets gallery folder to create it. So here I just uh, selecting a book assets gallery folder and uh, clicking OK, and it will render each of the variant using Houdini GL and uh, add it automatically to this. Uh, to this asset gallery database and uh, if you don't have this asset gallery database or you don't have an option to uh, click on the folder uh, you, need to, you then need to create a <coughs> new database file and then you have an and save it uh, somewhere uh, next to the maybe a heap file or what one else, or in any or in any place you want and then you have an option to add a directory and that's pretty much it for creating a procedural book, a simple procedural book, creating variations using PDG and then combining uh, PDG output uh, and creating a single USD multivariant file. And then from this a single USD multivariant file, create a layout asset gallery uh, per each variant book in this example and then use it uh, for the layout stuff, like in this case. So I hope you learned something out of it and as I said, if you have any questions, just write a comment down below and in the next video I will cover how to create a procedural picture frame uh, with different profiles and stuff like that and possibly how to add a, a random pictures uh, to each variation and it will be great and thank you for joining me in this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, have a great day, have a great life, enjoy your time, see you soon, bye.